Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'll lead you step by step through the ABRSM Theory grades. We're getting to the end now of Music Theory and Practice Workbook Grade 2. And so if you want to grab your workbook and we can crack on with that. There's lots of resources available to help you if you go to my website. If you go to SharonBill.com there are free PDF information sheets like this. They're available in US letter or A4 and they'll accompany each step of this series. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find out about the books that I've got available. If you visit SharonBill.com it's all there. If it is that you're working towards your ABRSM theory and practice exam, so you're going to take the exam paper I suggest you have a look and see about this book I've written, How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam. It's um, full of tips and techniques on how to make the best use of the time as you prepare for your exam and also how you best use the time when you're actually sitting in the exam room taking the paper. So if you go to SharonBill.com, it's all there. If you can give me a like, that'd be fab. And if you can subscribe to my channel, you'll be sure to keep updated. There's loads more in store. I'm really enjoying working through this series with you. So let's just crack straight on. And we're now moving to what I refer to as Section I. If you turn in your workbook to page 28, we're looking at Performance Directions. So I shall just call this section I and then you can turn in your PDF document to the grade 2 PDF section I. There's also a few little ideas there to help you. Now please do remember that all of these performance directions on page 28 and also over onto page 29 there's some articulation marks as well. These are in addition to everything that you covered in Grade 1. So you need to go back to your Grade 1 Music Theory and Practice Workbook. And um, so go back to the Grade 1. In fact, here we are, I've got one here. It's this one. And you need to pop back and remember that all of the sections, that all the, the terms that you learned in this section... Q, I refer to it, or page 27, and over onto page 28, you also need to remember all of these as well, these still apply. Now there's getting to be quite a lot of terms, there's a lot of Italian terms, there's an awful lot of um, performance symbols and terms, they're going to give you... Um, the lists in alphabetical order which is a sensible way to sort of maybe map out all the words that you need to learn but it's not easiest to learn them in that way and so I suggest that you group things thematically and so now combining all of the grade one words and all of the grade two words that are anything to do with slow tempo, if you group all of those together you'll begin to notice some common denominators. You'll see that adagio and lento mean slow. Largo also means slow but it's a more stately sort of slow. Larghetto is kind of rather slow but not as slow as largo. Grave is very slow or solemn and it's much better to group things thematically. I think it's much easier to remember. And get creative about how you will learn to do these. Get somebody to play a game with you and test you. I often um, just play like word games with my pupils to help you to learn these. Um, maybe colour code it and colour code all of the slow. Anything to do with fast will be a different colour. And so there are art articulation marks now as well. Now in grade one we dealt with staccato and legato. We have a strange mix in grade two where it looks like we've got a, um, a confusing mixture. We've got staccato and we've got legato. And you think, well, how is that possible? However, it makes sense when you remember that it means semi-staccato. It's sort of a less pronounced version of staccato. And so there's lots and lots of um, 
bits of revision to learn here. We've also got linking words, so just think about grouping things in kind of thematic sections. So look at your linking words. Here we've got ma and non and pu. So you may want to just use those linking words in a separate section because they can be applied in different contexts. So here the performance signs that you need to learn in addition to all of the crescendo, diminuendo and so forth from grade one. We dealt with an accent sign in grade one whereas now it's sort of turned over and become more italicised and thicker and that's an even stronger accent. We've already looked at the semi-staccato. We've also got super staccato which is a more of a coloured in wedge and this sign here, this line, it's sometimes referred to as a tenuto mark and it means to give the note a slight pressure, by no means is it an accent, it's just a slight pressure, it ordinarily means that it's slightly separated as well, so it's not staccato because we're giving it full value but there is a separation between the notes, they're still detached and they're given a little bit of extra pressure. So we're getting into a few more sort of subtle performance terms here as well. So it's certainly worth your time in learning those and I'd really recommend that you take your time to compile a list now because if you're moving on through the grades, if you don't and then you get to grades four and five, there's suddenly so many to take on um, it, you've kind of left it quite late at that point so learn it now and it'll really help you in the future so get your coloured crayons out get your pencils out whatever it takes to get the mojo going to help you to learn those I hope that's been helpful to you I hope you've enjoyed this series we've just got some revision exercises to come as we work through the general exercises in the next videos if you can give me a like that'd be fab I'm really enjoying it I hope you are too subscribe to my channel to keep updated and please do go to SharonBill.com it's all there for you lots of resource to help you I hope you've enjoyed it thanks for watching I'll see you next time bye